Okay, so it is Tuesday evening and I finished my classes and had dinner and now I'm going to do some demonstration of sentence writing uh, to follow the, the commitment I made during class. So you can actually see that we're looking at this is the notes that we had today in class. So after I'm finished working today uh, at doing these example sentences, I'll copy this document into a PDF and this will be my teaching notes as well as the additional explanation that I'm providing now. So I've also put a support video up on the website that is on our VIU Learn site that's from an older uh, semester, but it's still valid. It still covers the same concept. So it's just, it, it's there in case you wanted to have a, a little bit more explanation, a little bit more description of these four basic sentence types that we learned today in class. Just a reminder, simple sentence, compound sentence, complex A sentence, complex B sentence. And I it additionally included all of the formulas today. So remember, C equals clause. When you want to have a simple sentence, you need a noun and a verb. We could also call them subject and predicate. You'll see that in the additional video that I've added. Second sentence type was called a compound sentence. Now, the thing that's unique and, and powerful about compound sentences is that you're joining two ideas together. So you have two clauses. That would mean each of those clauses needs its own subject noun and its own main verb, which we can also call the predicate. Uh, then you take this formula as the guiding formula for the structure we're looking for when we're building our compound sentences. And you'll notice that I've capitalized the C at the beginning of the formula. That's because at the beginning of every sentence, we do want a capitalized letter. Uh, you can see we've included a comma and then the linking element. Those are our coordinating conjunctions for and nor, but, or, yet. So only six coordinating conjunctions and those six uh, linking words will be used to make compound sentences. So you've got your linking word and then you have your second clause, which of course will need its own subject noun and its own main verb. We have the example, she talked, comma, and he listened. Very simple. Uh, one of the students asked me at the end of class, does it have to be this basic? And these are the most basic examples that we're looking at so far. You can add other things in. You could have an, an object coming at the end, right? You could say she talked um, to Michael. That's, that's fine, still valid. Uh, and he listened. This is called an object, okay? So sometimes we can add other pieces into the sentence. We don't need them to be there to, to be grammatical. They're extra, but we can add them without ruining the sentence or without making it um, incorrect. And so other elements that we could add in would be a prepositional uh, phrase. So she talked to Michael and he listened in the dining room. And you'll notice now we've just added a little bit more detail. This is a prepositional phrase. This is an object. Okay, excellent. It's an indirect object. Okay, so we've got some other examples here, uh, but then we move into the final form we learned today, which is complex A. And we've got our formula here, always going to start with a subordinate conjunction, clause one, then a comma, then clause two. Or we've got the second version. Don't know why we made that part as highlighted. That just kind of happened. So we'll just remove that out of the way there. We also have complex B and you'll notice the main difference here is it's about the placement of the subordinate conjunction. In the complex B structure, we actually put the subordinate conjunction into the middle of the sentence. It's acting as the linking word. Okay, let's take a look down below. So we'll do some examples here. And hopefully as I'm writing the examples, it'll become clear what we're looking for. So I'm going to turn the microphone off here and just do some typing for a bit. Just watch, follow along. You can try to identify the nouns, the verbs. Are there adjectives used? What else do we notice about, in particular, the way the clauses are linked together? Simple sentences first.
So all three of those are simple sentences. They're all, they all consist of one clause. What we can see is that we can, we can go through and we can find the subject in all three of them. This one is a preposition. We can find, or sorry, a, a, this one's a pronoun. We can find the main verbs in all of them. And then we can also look at some additional information that it quite often additional information will be added at the end of the sentence in the form of a prepositional phrase. And I added a little bit here. So this is a prepositional phrase. And here's another prepositional phrase. And you can see that they're, they're just giving us more detail. Okay, let's move on. Compound sentences. And yet again, you'll notice, maybe it's not a bad idea for me to highlight the linking element here that joins the two clauses together. And you can see that you'll always see the same format. It's always going to be comma, and then whichever one of these linking words, coordinate conjunctions, we have chosen to use. And I tried to use a few different ones, so I've used yet. Uh, the two most common are obviously and and but and but so those are those are very very common so it, sometimes it's useful to try to practice to use some of the ones that are a little bit less common and I, I think I've done that successfully here added in yet and but okay wonderful and so you'll notice that when I'm writing it's always going to be the same pattern you've got clause one then you've got your linking tool comma fanboys and then clause two these are compound sentences Okay, moving on, complex sentences. Now remember, these ones are always going to have subordinate conjunction at the beginning, then clause one, then we have the comma in the middle. So I'll actually just uh, highlight the linking elements uh, within the formula. And for, sub for this, this formula, the complex A formula, both the subordinate conjunction and the comma are part of that linking tool. So again, you'll notice the same pattern that we're always going to have our linking word at the beginning and then that comma in the middle between the clauses. Essentially, both the subordinate conjunction and that comma are part of the same structure. You need both of them when we use this formula, the complex A formula. And now the main difference with complex B is that the structure is opposite, right? So you'll notice we have clause one at the beginning, then we have that subordinate conjunction in the middle. It is performing the same exact job as the comma here. 
in this um, sister formula, the complex A formula. So it would be really redundant. It would be really repetitive to put a subordinate conjunction and a comma. It would be like putting two commas. It wouldn't make any sense. So this is doing the job of linking the ideas together. So by itself, because of where we've placed it, it's sufficient. Let's look at some sentence examples here. Okay, so once again, you'll notice I'll highlight these linking words. And one of the interesting things to know about, note about subordinate conjunctions is they can be one word, they can be two words, sometimes they'll even be made up of three words. And I will add that list of uh, subordinate conjunctions to our uh, module one content on VIU Learns. So hopefully it's helpful for you to see the demonstrated methods for writing these types of sentences. If you need to, when you're writing your own examples, go back and watch the section for that. Like if you're writing your compound, watch the section of the video for the compound sentences. Use it as a guide. Notice how I always start with my subject, then I have my verb. There might be a prepositional phrase that's describing more detail. Then I have my linking word, whether it is a coordinate conjunction, or a subordinate conjunction that will determine whether it's a compound sentence or a complex sentence. And then you'll also notice that I'm always sticking very tightly to the formulas that I've provided. So all of the tools should be there. Give it a try. There's no, there's no uh, negative outcome if you try and there are some corrections needed. In fact, corrections are great because this is how we learn. Awesome. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you on Thursday.